This is the face of Indonesia today. Modern, forward-looking and abundant in resources. Indonesia had an economic growth rate of 6.1% in 2010. It is one of a handful of countries that not only sailed through the recent global financial crisis unscathed, but also grew stronger. The country's growth rate for 2011 is projected at 6.3%. Indonesia also leads the way in the production of some of the world's most sought-after commodities, notably palm oil and coal. It surpassed Malaysia as the world's top producer of crude palm oil in 2008, and the country is now the largest exporter of thermal coal in the world, supplying a large portion of the world's energy demand. The global community is clearing taking notice of Indonesia's exceptional success as it holds a seat in the powerful G20 group of countries. As Indonesia pushes ahead with its ambitions abroad, there is renewed determination to work on problems at home. Corruption, poverty, unemployment, shortcomings in education, and severe gender inequalities are key issues that prevent Indonesia from reaching its full potential. These problems demand immediate action. 31 million people in Indonesia still live in conditions of grinding poverty. This is roughly 13% of the nation's population. A staggering 3.2 million citizens survive on less than $1 a day here. This country has 230 million people, but education is still a luxury for many. Each year, 1.5 million young people are unable to continue their education due to financial difficulties. Only 18% of those who graduate have the means to pursue higher education. The education sector is critically underfunded. Just 17.5% of the state budget is set aside by the government for education, significantly less than neighboring countries. Despite Indonesia's economic growth, unemployment remains stubbornly high. The rate of unemployment was 7.14% in 2010, only a slight improvement on the previous two years. Entrepreneurship is practically unheard of, with the number of new entrepreneurs comprising just 0.18% of the workforce. Indonesia is a land abundant in resources and potential. But to fulfill this promise, every member of society must do their part to turn this country around. This means that the government, the public and the private sector must work together to overcome this country's problems. As Indonesia's first social business enterprise, the Putra Sampurna Foundation has been well equipped to face these challenges ever since it started. Founded in 2001, for almost a decade, the Putra Samporna Foundation has been focusing in education for underprivileged families. In the first state of its journey, the foundation is focused on access to education. To date, the foundation has awarded more than 34,600 scholarships to deserving students. In the second stage, the foundation improved education quality through its programs, such as school-wide improvement program and Samporna Foundation Teacher Institute. The foundation has improved quality education at 17 state high schools and five Islamic schools for more than 16,000 students. In its third stage, the foundation is focusing on improving quality to match international standards by establishing its own center of learning, such as Samporna Academies. The foundation is also on its way to build an international standard university in Indonesia. But this was not enough. The Putra Samporna Foundation has decided to take a giant leap beyond education. Its mission is to create high caliber future leaders and entrepreneurs with the principles of professionalism, transparency, and excellence. So Indonesia can meet the challenges of global participation. In a mere 10 years, the Putra Samporna Foundation has completed an historic transition 
from the philanthropic organization to Indonesia's first social business enterprise. A social business is an enterprise driven by need that operates to business standards and generates revenue, guided by its charter. Investors do not take any profits or personal gains. The main objective of the enterprise is to achieve social goals, which the foundation and its leader, Putra Samporna, have been working towards since the foundation began. The programs of the foundation have expanded significantly in the last 10 years, but Putra Samporna remains the face of this social business enterprise. Everybody should get involved. And the foundation is basically the the catalyst for people to come together to sit there and channel you know where do they want to participate is it in women's empowerment is it in education is it in entrepreneurship development and the rest of it with the new mission at the heart of the putra samporna foundation comes weighty responsibility and the need for fresh funds the putra samporna foundation works with many global partners governments corporations other foundations the media and the wider public towards its goal of building an egalitarian and meritocratic Indonesian society. A society with a vibrant economy and anchored in democracy. Donors are a key part of this growing partnership. The foundation needs the full support of donors to create high caliber future leaders and entrepreneurs. The foundation is also a trusted partner of local, national and global companies for corporate social responsibility programs in Indonesia. In the last decade, it has attracted more than 250 companies and managed over 70 million US dollars in funds from Indonesia and overseas. I'm now with Neni Sumawinata, the Managing Director of Putra Sampurna Foundation. Hello Ibu Neni, how are you? Hi Dan, it's good to see you again. Have a seat. See you. Thank you. Ibu Neni, why do you think companies want to work with the foundation? There are two reasons. First and foremost, we are Indonesia's first social business enterprise. What does this mean? This means we run our organization in a professional and transparent way with good business practices. Secondly, we have a broad network and infrastructure from Aceh to Papua, which means companies need not build infrastructure anymore. And all the funds go directly to the implementation of sustainable CSR programs. How does the foundation accommodate donors with very different interests? Well, we have different programs to serve the different fields, which ranges from women empowerment, education, entrepreneurship, and compassionate relief. So donors just select the programs that they prefer, and we will then customize in accordance to their needs. Can you give an example? Well, let's just say as a corporation, your area of operation is in Malang. I would then send a team to assess and evaluate the environment, the situation, and your area of operation. Then they would come back with their recommendation. So they could recommend, oh, you might need to build new schools, or the schools are quite good, but we need to upgrade the standards. Or the need could be, we need a community center for the women. So it just depends on their recommendation and this is what we would then submit to our donors. Why is it so crucial for donors to act now through the foundation and give back to the community? Indonesia is facing challenges and to solve this, the government cannot work alone. The country needs the help of all stakeholders, including the private sector. The private sector need to act now as part of good corporate governance before it's too late. And this country needs high quality future leaders to take this country to the next level in the era of globalization. The Putra Samporna Foundation has a grand strategy, the pathway to leadership, to achieve its social business goals and to create leaders from the lowest economic quintile. These are not just any leaders, but competent leaders with moral integrity and a strong commitment to social justice. The Foundation's aim is to help 1,000 community leaders graduate every year into all walks of life, including both private enterprise and public service. In order to support the pathway to leadership, 
the foundation engages in the four pillars of activities. These are education, entrepreneurship, women's empowerment, and compassionate relief programs. Each of the pillars is crucial in shaping the social business enterprise and producing a level of leadership that has been heretofore unimagined in Indonesia. The first pillar is education. Education is the core of the Putra Sampurna Foundation's social business programs. The foundation has opened Sampurna academies in a number of cities across the country. The academy selects its students from the top 5 to 10 percent of junior high school graduates who come from low socio-economic backgrounds. Putra Sampurna Foundation has a vision to provide this leadership education experience to 1,000 new students every year. In order to achieve this grand vision, we will need support. By partnering with both public and private sector, we should be able to work together and create more academies, more opportunities for the students to go through this experience and create future leaders that the country needs who will be able to contribute back to the country. When I study in Sampurna Academy, I got many knowledge about how to be a good leader because I have joined in Pathway to Success program and in this program I get many skills to be a good leader. The foundation builds on its educational programs by launching the Samporna School of Education and Samporna School of Business as the first steps to building a world-class university in Indonesia. The Samporna School of Education is the first teaching college in the country at the undergraduate level that targets high achieving students primarily from financially disadvantaged families who can benefit from international level higher education. Putra Sampurna Foundation has a long history in developing quality teachers in Indonesia and the ultimate goal is to create new generation of teachers who are professionals and can be educational leaders in the field. The Samporna School of Business aims to be a leading business school in the region that combines world-class business practices with leadership development for Indonesia's future leading entrepreneurs. In order to be a true international school of business, we need to excel in certain areas. One of the most important is the ASEAN Research Center. Another addition to the Putra Samporna Foundation's education services is the Access Education Beyond program. Access is a new international higher education exchange program that enables Indonesian students, including those financially disadvantaged, to enroll at universities overseas. The program also fosters university-to-university -university partnerships between nations. We consult on any country in the world. So regardless of where students would like to study, we can help Indonesian students to be able to access higher education in any country, in any university worldwide, to expand their opportunities to be able to reach their dreams and goals. The foundation also provides financial aid through its Koprasi Siswa Bangsa Initiative in the form of a long-term soft loan for students who wish to pursue higher education but in need of financial assistance. We're proud to bring this as a new option. We're slowly introducing this so people can start to learn about it and we're very optimistic that this is going to have significant impacts for Indonesian students in accessing higher education. We believe that this will have great benefits to those from the lowest economic quintile in particular for accessing higher education. The Putra Samborna Foundation does not limit the mission to educate to its own schools. It has launched an educational development service operator called School Development Outreach to advance the standards of schools and teachers across the nation to be able to nurture the next generation of young leaders. More than 50% of the, uh, the country's teachers are underqualified to meet the competency set by the Minister of National Education. Putra Samborna Foundation can help to improve the quality of educators and the school system. Widodo is a fine example of future leaders that are fostered by the Putra Samporna Foundation. With the help of a scholarship from the foundation, 
we Dodo enrolled in the Gajamata University in Jogjakarta, majoring in agricultural technology. In 2009, he founded a small business, Save Maranatha Food, that works together with a farmer's group in his hometown of Bantul. The business involves the community in the entire production process. Kalau lihat dulu, saya sangat bersyukur sekarang bisa melanjutkan hingga tingkat universitas dan merintis usaha di bidang industri pertanian. Akses ke sekolah dengan guru terbaik adalah kunci saya untuk usaha masyarakat menjadi mandiri. The foundation's second pillar, entrepreneurship, is crucial in reducing the country's high unemployment rate. With this in mind, it has launched the Makar Entrepreneur Network which seeks to strengthen the Indonesian entrepreneurial community by fostering and creating relationships among entrepreneurs and angel investors. Makar is the only organization in Indonesia that takes entrepreneurs' business ideas and helps them transform it into qualified business plans so that angel investors can feel safe and secure about investing in these ideas. The third pillar is women's empowerment. The foundation has launched Sahabat Wanita, or Friends of Women, to promote the empowerment of women and gender equality in Indonesia. This is key in a country where a lot of women in the family often work in the informal sector out of economic necessity. We believe an empowered woman will educate their children better. We believe an empowered woman will create a bigger chance for the creations of future leaders. We believe if we empower a woman, we certainly going to empower a family. If a family is empowered, then certainly the country will be empowered. Sahaba Wanita has also started the Koprasi Sahaba Wanita Initiative. It provides financial loans and retail development to increase the welfare of its members. Nama saya Halima. Alasan saya bergabung dengan Sahabat Wanita. Saya ingin maju dan melebihi ibu-ibu yang lain. Manfaat dengan bergabung dengan sahabat wanita, saya mendapatkan modal berupa barang dagangan yang laku dan juga mendapatkan ilmu dari training-training yang mereka berikan. Warung saya lebih ramai, pendapatan saya sekarang lebih banyak dan hidup saya sekarang lebih baik. The fourth and final pillar of the Putra Sampurna Foundation is compassionate relief. The foundation trains future leaders to show compassion and give back to the communities they came from. It has created Bayit Al Kamil, or House of Perfection, a caring humanitarian institute with the aim to improve the welfare of fellow citizens and provide relief to underprivileged families in communities afflicted by natural disasters. Our main task in our disaster relief programs is actually to support, to act, to help the people to immediately recover from the damage that they've been suffered by the disaster. Ten years of dedication, ten years of helping those who cannot help themselves. The Putra Sampurna Foundation is discovering and developing the nation's true potential through its unique role as a social business entity. As Indonesia reaches a crossroad in its history as a nation, the foundation's goal of creating 1,000 community leaders every year is more important than ever. These high-caliber future leaders and entrepreneurs who have the necessary fortitude and moral integrity will help Indonesia claim its rightful place as a leader in the global community. The Putra Sampurna Foundation is helping to build Indonesia into the dynamic and innovative world leader it could be. But no organization can do this alone. The Putra Sampurna Foundation needs your support. We need to join together people from all walks of life to make the nation great. We need to fulfill the potential of every citizen of this great land. We need to move forward and develop Indonesia's true potential. Together, we can make a difference for Indonesia.